Hi, my name is Matt Napier, and this is part three of Locked Up with a Digico. In part one, um, I showed you how I would build the session file on this SD12. In part two, we went in how to uh, set up a mix and build a mix. We also looked into macros. And in part three, we're going to go into snapshots and how to use timecode to fire your snapshots. So if we look on the software here, you can see our snapshots. I'll just close this. If you go to the snapshots tab, it comes up with the snapshots page. Now, the very first thing you need to do, and this is part of setting up your desk, is decide what's going to be included in your snapshot. So you have the tab here for global scope. Uh, when you open this for the first time, uh, by default, everything is selected. Uh, snapshots are basically, if you think of a camera, when you save a snapshot, you're saving every single detail on the desk. And when you recall a snapshot, if the parameters are selected for recall, they will be recalled. Now, when I first start building a show, I actually keep a lot of things out of snapshots. Um, when they're out of snapshots, think of them as an analog parameter. So they don't change from snapshot to snapshot. You can change the, uh, for example, here I have my input devices excluded from snapshots. That's the, uh, the actual head amp gain plus the uh, patch. So that's currently out of snapshots. Uh, input channels, um, the input tab here. I'll often enable this later on once I'm a bit more set. That changes the digital trim. But these are the parameters I'll start with, including in snapshots. And as I progress more into the show and we have more snapshots, I will then add more parameters into the snapshots. So uh, the reason for doing this is day one in rehearsals, you don't want to be changing things too much because the musicians will still be changing things and you want to wait for things to settle down a little bit, wait for the keyboard player to get all his uh, patch levels correct before you start writing them into snapshots. Otherwise, you run the risk of chasing around in a circle and neither of you being very happy. Um, so once you've selected your global parameters, you can now create your first snapshot. So basically, if you click on Insert New, and I'm going to give this the song title here, and also my second song, I'll create a second snapshot. So that was one of these days. So that's my two snapshots for each song. Now, when I toggle between, if I go uh, Fire Next, Fire Previous, down here, and I can also do that on the console, if we're on the console here, if I'm going from between snapshots. Now, at the moment, both snapshots are exactly the same. So, for example, now I'm in one of these days snapshots, the second one. I will pull these two faders down here. And then if we go back in the software and we'll go update selected, update current, sorry. And that updates the current snapshot that's highlighted. So now if we go back to the desk and I toggle between the two, you can see there the faders are changing. So as you build your snapshots, you'd, I always start with a snapshot for each song. Um, and then as the show develops, I'll add in more snapshots in between. Um, one of the things you can also do is have a crossfade between your snapshots. So if we go into scope here and select crossfades, we can select crossfades. Now at the moment, we just had a fader change. So let's give the fader change a little bit of time. So let's go up and give it so one second in between. So now when we change between those two snapshots, what we should see, if I go back and show you on the camera, as I change back to the first snapshot, rather than jumping up, the faders move up slowly. You can do that with all the parameters. So you can set your parameters up to have different snapshots and different fade times. So as you switch between the two, the music doesn't suddenly jump to the new level. You have a nice smooth fade. So you build your snapshots for the show. The next thing you need to realize is that within each snapshot, you also have individual scope. So if we go down here onto this tab, you can see that on the screen, and click Recall Scope, this allows you to actually select individual parameters. And I'll go into this in a bit more detail in a minute. But between the global snow scope and the snapshot scope, you have a lot of flexibility in what you want to change in songs as you go along. Um, and the other big thing to know about snapshots is you can have groups. So you can add snapshots to a group. If you go to the groups tab here and give it a new group name, so we might say the first set, set one, and then basically we can add, let me get rid of that tab there, we can add snapshots into that group. So there you go, you click on the snapshot and it adds it to the group. Now the advantage of groups is, so these are all in the same group, is when I make a change on this song, if I wanted to, I could also make the change apply across all the groups, and that would be by going update group button here. So if I make a change on this and go update group, that will change it for both those songs. 
Now, to make things even slightly more complicated, you have two different types of groups. When they're blue, they are absolute groups. Absolute groups only control uh, changes are only made if they have the same value before the change was made. The other option is you can have relative groups. So when you collect, select, sorry, select relative groups down here, the uh, snapshot names change to red. Now, relative is slightly different. That allows all controls to change relatively. So if you add 5 dB onto a fader, that will also add 5 dB onto the initial value of all the other snapshots. So that's a really useful one. If you have different levels between songs, somebody asks for 2 dB more of the kick drum in their mix on every single song. So you can then make the change as a relative group and do update, and that will change it. If you're in absolute groups, the change will only be made if the initial parameters were the same. It's also worth remembering that all parameters that are non-DB values, things such as pan and EQ frequency, they're treated as absolute, absolute snapshots no matter which selection you have down here. So that's your uh, difference between relative and absolute uh, snapshots. So crossfades, or to mention crossfades, um, Something to be aware of with crossfade times is what your simply value is set to. If you change your simply value, it will change your time, but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, but that leads into simply quite nicely. So you have the snapshots here and you want them to change by simply. Now, simply uh, is uh, the Society for Motion Picture and Television Engineers, and it's actually the 12M specification for simply. It's basically a series of uh, a, a, a uh, digital uh, clips and noises, which translates into uh, metadata to provide a time reference for editing. And it's a pretty nasty sound. I can solo some here so you can hear it. So yeah, you go. That's the sound of Simpty. So it's not something you want to pop up on the, on the actual audio stream of the desk. But Simpty LTC, linear time code, is a audio track that is striped quite often in the live shows to the playback. And it's sent to the video guys, to the lighting guys, and to the audio guys. And we can basically all pick that Simpty up, and we can then use that as a time reference. You can use that time reference to fire your snapshots. So we go back on the desk here. When you're actually in your snapshots, if you go to recall times, you have an option here for either a duration. So when a snapshot fires, it will run for so many seconds. Or you can actually enter a Simpty value. And that will fire the snapshot when it sees that simply value. Now, in front of me, I've got an SD12. Now, the SD7 is the only desk in the range at the moment that takes simply directly. Um, all the other consoles take a MIDI timecode. MIDI timecode is a series of quarter frame MIDI messages. So it reads the simply, converts them to MIDI messages, and then fires them into the console. Um, so you can see on the screen here, I've got the simply running off my playback here, and the numbers are coming into the desk. Now, basically, if I set a snapshot to fire at that time, at that exact time, that's when that snapshot will fire. You can use um, a few different things to go from simply to MIDI timecode, uh, sorry, LTC to MTC. Uh, Reaper is one you can use for free, or there's a few companies who make a standalone box, which you can take the simply into, and that fires out the, uh, the MTC. Now, when you first set it up to use with simply, you have to decide on your frame rate. Uh, simply has a... a four or five major uh, different sample rates. Um, there's, let me see if I can find it on the screen. I can never remember where this is. It's something you set up at the beginning. There you go, time code and transport. And you can see this panel here. i show you on the offline software. Where's my mouse gone? Yep, setup, time code and transport. So the beginning of a tour or the beginning of a show, you would decide with whoever's sending you the symptom, you would ask them what the frame rate is. So we're using 25 on this particular project. Um, the different uh, frame rates, you have 24, that's uh, mainly for film, and it's also now used for 4K and 6K video production. Uh, 25 is used for PAL and CCAM and DVB. Uh, 2997 is a North American frame rate, mainly used in North America, and 30 is ATSC. Uh, you also have for 2997 and 30, you have drop frame, and what drop frame basically does, it was a compromise when color was brought in for NTC, NTSC television and it basically skips 18 frames every 10 minutes. But for audio, it's mainly either 30 for North America, uh, non-drop, and it's uh, 25 is for Europe, because that was the standard that's been decided by the European Broadcasting Union. However, in terms of what we do, it doesn't really matter as long as we set this up at the beginning. Now, earlier on, I said it changes your uh, time on your crossfades, which I can show you on here. Uh, the crossfade here, let me give this a crossfade of... 
uh, one second. Now that's, oops, sorry. So there you go, it's got a crossfade of one second on the kick drum, on the fader there. Now, oh, hang on, let me pull that back up so you can see it. There you go. Now, if I change the, uh, the time code here, so I go from 25 frames to 30 frames a second, and actually if we look on here now, if I close this and then reopen it, you'll see that crossfade time has changed, and that's because we've changed what time is. Rather than having 30 frames, uh, sorry, 25 frames in a second, we've now got 30 frames in a second. So that's why before you start the project, Decide on your simply time rates because otherwise it will mess up your. Uh, you see that it's gone back to one second now, which is what we want. So it's important that you set this up at the beginning. So you click and you you talk to the other people on the project. You t work out what the uh, the simply coming into you is going to be. You agree on a standard twenty five frames per second, um, and then everybody's on the same page in terms of uh, what the the sample rate is for the time code. So the linear time code comes to you at the mixing console. If you have an SD seven, you can go straight into the back on the simply input. If you have a SD five um, or any of the other consoles in the range, you can either run that simply uh, through a bit of software on your computer, or you can run it through a standalone box to convert it to MIDI time code. And that's why on here you can see I've selected the time code source as MIDI. So MIDI is the time code source. Um, if I had an SD7, I'd be able to select SMPTE. If I wasn't using external time code, I would run the time code master myself and have this set to master. Um, you can then route your time code out to an output, and you can also have it offline. So you can take it, if you were the master, you could take it off offline to stop other machines triggering. So there you go. Once you've got your uh, your your time code source selected and it's set up, you can now, um, on your snapshots, Go to your snapshot that you want to change. Um, I'm going to go to this one. And you can select the time when you want this snapshot to change. So you go to recall times, enter in here, and you basically enter in the time. Um, one of the ways I find to get the time is to basically um, pre-record stuff. Uh, sorry, record stuff when we're rehearsing. And then afterwards, when the band have gone, I'll use my offline recording. I'll pause the recording where I want the snapshot change to happen and I will then enter in that simply time so it changes. Um, you've got to be careful what you put into snapshots. So for example, we've got these two snapshots here, um, which are the two songs. Um, so we're on brief at the moment. But in the middle of the song, I might want some changes to happen. So I may insert another snapshot here, and I might call that um, the Leslie up, because Leslie cabinets are quite noisy when they're not being played. So this snapshot here, I'm going to just bring up the Leslie. But if you can remember from before, we had a situation where this global scope and the snapshot scope has most of the things included. So if I look into scope here now and go to recall scope, everything's selected, but I don't actually want everything selected. So if I uh, just minimize this, if I take everything off for now, sorry, a little bit laborious. And then for this particular snapshot, I'm just going to change the Leslie. Um, and I'll tell you what I'll do that in a second. So the Leslie down here, there's the Leslie low and the Leslie high channels. And we're going to basically, on this snapshot in the middle, we're going to change the sends for it. And we're going to send change the fader values. Now, that basically means that in my snapshot panels here, if I make any changes be before this queue, then it doesn't matter. They won't change when I go to this snapshot. If I was, song starts, if I made some changes, when this snapshot comes up, if I hadn't taken everything else out of scope, any of the changes I've made would revert back to where they were the last time I'd saved it. So that for that reason, snapshots have got to be very specific in what you want to change. Otherwise, you can dig yourself a big hole and you could be in a situation where you make a change for a musician, the next snapshot comes along and changes, and all your changes that you've done, you lose. So this way, this snapshot now, the only thing that happens in this snapshot, because I changed the scope, is all it's going to do is change the send values and the rot and the fader values for those two channels, and that's all that's going to change. If I actually um, go to the recording here, uh, let's go to Reaper, and if I start it just before we get to the bit where the Leslie comes in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the track just at the bit where I want these um, these inputs to come on. So it's coming up, and I want to bring the faders up here. So there you go. If I look at the desk, you can see the desk there. You can see I've captured the time code reference it wants to be. So now I need to enter that into my software. There you go. So Leslie up, we want that to happen on uh, zero hours, uh, two minutes, 49 seconds, and 20 
three frames. So obviously 25 frames per second, that's just before the 25th second. And then you make sure that active is switched on here. So now when it sees this time code, the desk will change for me. So let's go back to the desk and we'll just have a look here. So in my first song, Breathe, I want the Leslie down. So I'm gonna save that there. In my next one, I've got the faders coming up, which is fine. So now let's see if this does it manually for me when I run the music. Let me go back to Reaper. There is a slightly quicker way of doing this as well, which I will show in a minute. Oh, I've lost my marker in Reaper. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it brings those faders up for me. Choose your own ground. The long you live. There you go. So that's done it for me. So basically, I don't need to worry about the Leslie now. The Leslie's going to turn itself on. And that's the beauty of snapshots. Now, because the only thing included in that snapshot were those two channels, I can be mixing, doing other things, and I don't need to worry about the Leslie being switched on. It will just do it by itself. Um, so I always try and automate the constants and keep the variables free. So that way I can focus on the variable things, but the constants, the things that happen every single night, every single night I know that Leslie's going to come in in the right place. So I can basically turn the faders up just before the musician hits the keys, and that way the mix is nice and clean, and the Leslie mics are just turned on just to the bit when he plays, and that keeps everything nice and clean and simple. Now, there is another way of doing that, um, which is we go back to the snapshot here. When you're in, you can capture the actual snapshot as it's going. Uh, where's it gone? Here it is. So if I go to Recall Times and then select Capture Recall Times, uh, what this does is it enables a new mode now. So whenever I insert a new snapshot, it will automatically take the time code that's currently playing at the time. So if we uh, play a bit of music. Oh. That's the top of the show. Let's jump to here. Okay, so I'm going to insert a new snapshot. Insert a new snapshot. Give it a name. Call it snapshot number three. No particular reason. And let's stop that. And then when we go into our recall times here, Number three will now have, you can see there the time codes. I don't know if you can see it very well on that screen, but yeah, basically now that's captured the time code that was playing at the time when I hit um, insert new. So you can do it two ways. You can either do it that way as you go along, or the way I tend to do it is I tend to record stuff uh, with the musicians in rehearsals, and then I can get the exact point where I want the snapshot to be, and I can put the time in and I can change it. So that's uh, two ways of uh, firing your snapshots from Simpty. I think that's most things that you need to know about snapshots to get you started with the Simpty. Um, the main thing with the Simpty is make sure that you get the, the frame rate correct before you start um, and that everyone's on the same page. It will say on the console when you're, uh, when you're on the time code and transport page, if you select the wrong one, it will actually say mismatch when it's playing. So, for example, if I play some music now, it'll come up and say mismatch. So it's, it's quite easy to get it right. But you need to get it right at the beginning because otherwise if you change it afterwards or your crossfade times change and that can be a little bit of a pain to fix. Um, so yeah, if there's anything else anyone wants me to do any other videos, just uh, maybe drop uh, Digico an email or put it in the comments box or something and then um, we're still in lockdown so I've still got time to do another one. Um, I hope they've been of use to people. Um, I hate making them. Um, I just do it as a, a keep myself busy while I'm stuck at home. Um, but yeah, hopefully... They've been of some interest to some people and thank you very much for watching.